Our next speaker is uh, Prairie Elementary School Principal Dennis Griffin. Everyone, because I have a little bit of a presentation to show. I figure it's better to show pictures of kids than just me talking. That's what we really care about. Give me a second to initialize. So while it's setting up, my name is Dennis Griffin. I am the principal of Prairie Elementary School. This is my third year as the principal of Prairie Elementary. Um, very proud of the work that we have done thus far. And we're gonna show some of those pieces in the presentation once it finalizes. Name on the building, and we put our name on the building. And 
And one of the things that we added to that is future leaders, college and career ready, and that we are going to make a difference. I believe that with education and setting a very strong foundation, you are going to open up and build stronger communities, stronger families, and just a better world in general. So I just don't look at education as just a time for kids to come and learn reading, writing, and math. I look at every scholar within our building as a game changer that they are going to effectively help change the entire world. And that's really what education is supposed to be for everyone. So that is something that we stress on a daily basis at Prairie. We stress diversity, that we want everyone to be accepted for who they are, because we need more of that in our world as well. And we're very proud because we really work as a collaborative team. Some of the pieces that we were really celebrating this year, and uh, which the visual will show, is that on the state report card, uh, for two years in a row we have met expectations, but we are continuously growing each year by three percentage points. Where if we do that one more year, this upcoming year, we will, eventually, we will then be in the exceeding expectations point. And that really isn't because of me, that is because of the dedicated educators in our building, and more importantly, the parents that give us their most prized possessions each and every day so that we can help <coughs> prepare the kids for the future. Another piece that we're really, really excited about at Prairie is that we are building stronger community relations. We invite parents into our building all the time. We want you to be there as, oh, we want you to be there as much as you possibly can because you need to know exactly what your son and daughter is learning in school. Uh, one of the things that I'm proud about is that I vowed I would never be the principal that sat behind a desk all day. So every day I make it a point to go and give high fives and talk to kids and sit down and actually learn with them, ask them questions, and actually give feedback to teachers. And in our building, we have a collaborative structure where teachers give feedback to me as well. Because the only way that we can get better as a community is if we are all learning together. So we really, really stress that part about that we're all learning on this journey together. So in literacy last year, we grew by 10 percentage points. So that is a very big step for us as a school because I was a math teacher for seven years. And I find it very hard that I am now agreeing with literacy teachers across the board. If you would have asked me which subject is more important, <laughs> I would have said math. However, when I became a principal, someone said to me, from kindergarten through third grade, you are learning to read. From third grade on, you are reading to learn. And from that moment, it split for me, and I never second guessed which one was more important. Because you need literacy in everything that you do. So one of the things that we implemented two years ago is a school-wide reading program. Last year, we read over one million minutes as a school outside of the school day. Really impressive. And then the kids had the opportunity to choose what they want for their incentive. They could choose to dress me up any way they wanted, which I would have had a little bit of a problem with. Uh, I like to coordinate things very, very particular how I dress. They said, I can sleep on the roof for a night. Not really fond of that. Don't want to have a visitor like who's on top of Prairie Elementary. And they said I could be Batman. So I dressed up as Batman for the day and it has carried over into this year where you will see me with my Batman suit occasionally or my Batman book bag. So we are building those really strong foundations that way kids enjoy it. Um, and they give away my secret identity every day when the visitor comes to the building. So I don't understand that part. <coughs> the other thing that we really talk about at Prairie and I really want to share this is the college and career focus. You hear a lot of schools talk about having a college and career focus. We take it a little bit differently. Every classroom at Prairie is named after a college. Every single one. Above every classroom is the year that scholar will graduate from school. And we keep it there and it goes with them every year. Because a lot of times what happens is we start having conversations about college when a kid becomes a junior or a senior in high school. But sometimes that's a little bit too late. So we're not saying that everybody has to go to college, but we at least want to let you know that additional education, number one, is essential to your success. And more importantly, at least you have the option because you can start planning and having conversations about it at a young age. We do have one big problem at Prairie, and I haven't done a good job of converting people. I've talked to Alderman Perry, I've been trying my best to convert him. Uh, I'm a Marquette graduate. Most of Prairie supports the Wisconsin Badgers. Right now. Yeah. 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 Tough room. 
Um, football, I am absolutely an avid Badgers fan. But when it comes to basketball season, there's this one game that the entire school circles on the calendar. Uh, right now, I am up two to one. And last year, I had to wear Wisconsin Badger gear for a week because I lost. And this year, all of the teachers dressed up in blue and gold for me because Marquette beat Wisconsin this year. So that's something that we celebrate at our school as well. And the kids really get into it because that weekend, all you hear as I walk down the hall is Wisconsin, no matter which class you want to go to. Uh, a couple other things that we talk about as we try to have, um, we're looking to expand upon our college and career readiness by having volunteers come in and speak to our kids. Our fifth graders just had a career fair where they did research on different careers so that way they have an understanding of what it takes to accomplish certain goals and dreams and aspirations that they may have. I can be honest with you, I never knew what it took to be a principal. I just had in my mind that I wanted to be a doctor when I grew up. And then I encountered blood and realized that it was not for me. <laughs> so I left that alone. But we want to give kids that experience now at a younger age. So we send kids to the dentist and they get to see what happens behind the scenes. <coughs> so we're always looking for parents to come in and give their expertise and share with kids because that's how you truly learn and get experience that way. Uh, we also had this year Representative Scott Allen come out and visit Prairie because there was a hot topic over license plates that was going around and Prairie wanted to enter, our fourth graders wanted to enter their designs and they weren't able to. So what happened, Michelle Anderson, our art teacher, contacted representative, the representative and he came out and spoke to all the kids and he uh, was able to engage in them with their license plates that they created, which I wish I could show you, but I can't right now. <laughs> the biggest celebration we had this year is that Prairie turned 50. And we invited people within the school district. We invited former principals. I am currently principal number seven that Prairie has had in 50 years, which is a pretty big accomplishment because principals usually <laughs> come and go. Uh, I was talking to Mr. Nelson Bobado and picking up some tips on how I can stay around for 30 years, just like he stayed around for 30 years. <laughs> and then finally, um, one of our, the significance of staying connected is important to us that we started last year a legacy tree. We have a mantra at Prairie that once a Puma, you're always a Puma. So what we started with the fifth graders last year is that we took a tree, uh, Michelle Anderson drew the tree, and the kids took their finger, their handprints, and put it on the wall, and they signed their name. So we will leave that tree up until they graduate from 12th grade. And that way, from now until 12th grade, they can always come back to Prairie and they can see their connection to Prairie with their hand there because too often we separate schools as, and compartmentalize them, when in actuality we're all united together throughout this entire journey. So that's also why I really take pride in students that have already left me and gone on to middle school. Twice a year I go to the middle school and I visit my former students during lunch. Just to show that we're really connected, that I'm always gonna be here to support you and to make sure that you're not going to the principal's office. <laughs> All right? I don't want to make you look bad. Um, and that's it for me. Uh, once again, I apologize that technology didn't work on my side, but that's one of the flaws that you always depend on. So thank you so much for your time. Dean, you have a question? I just wanted to say that technology is very important for the future of where we're going. Mm -hmm. I've got a daughter though, who's got a 4.15 GPA at Catholic Memorial. She's fifth in her class. She and I will be visiting Baylor, that's in Waco, Texas, over spring break. She's never used an iPad for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, sir. I'm glad your technology failed because I think you did a wonderful job. <laughs> Isn't that kind of the irony, right? <laughs> and kind of what Dean points out is that actually, I think what Mr. Griffin pointed out too is that children are educated differently, and it's important to have an open mind when it comes to that. Yes, Ms. Lombardi. Uh, just one comment. 
technology may be here, but if you don't know how to speak with people and if you don't know how to look someone eyeball to eyeball, you are missing what the personality is inside. And I compliment, I've hung around this community for many years. I compliment everything that you're doing and I was a school district employee for many years, et cetera. But the thing that is concerning me more and more is the more older woman. So many people don't know how to have conversation with each other anymore. And so I would tell you, thank you for your presentation. And I'm glad it didn't work because I got to hear you talk. Thank you. Uh, you back up what you just said one moment. I know how much of a life skill that is. So one of the things that we do at Prairie, um, we don't, when kids come to school, we have them coast switch. So when you're talking to your teachers, you can't say yeah, you can't say no, nah, you can't slouch in your chairs when you're learning. We want every kid to be really engaged because when you leave us, we, how, we work on how do you shake hands. We work on looking each other in the eye and articulating your voice. Like those are important life skills. So we didn't forget about that. My mom would be very upset at me if, she, if I did. And she comes to my school and visits me sometimes. So. <laughs> yes, sir. I couldn't resist that. One of the things in terms of technology I think you got to be cautious about is even the leaders in Silicon Valley now send their kids to screen free schools. So they don't have any technology at the schools. They go old school. So if those guys are know something, you know, that's, that's something we all need to think about. Yeah, I think that's the ever-evolving mix of how people are educated. And you know, really, your schooling should not get in the way of your education. I just want to say that one time. That's not my line. And yes, yeah, sometimes it's through screens, sometimes it's not. And I'm very, very comfortable with the balance that I think are in the schools now. But, but you're right. People learn differently, and the more, the quicker do we recognize that, the better off we're well, But the, the thing about that is these guys know what the technology is doing to the populace and the people and the kids. Yeah. And they're, they're basically, they're moving their own kids away from them. Yeah. Mr. Hahn, did you have a question? Um, no, not exactly a, a, a question, a comment. Um, I hope you do a great job getting them out of school but they're gonna end up at one of the three middle schools. And uh, my son was at Higher and then Horning, and he wasn't doing all that well in regular <coughs> class, and so we were induced to put him into flight, which was even more iPad, supposed to work independently. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with that program or not, it was highly encouraged out of Higher, and um, it was, we, we, we did it for a year, and uh, sometime in December before um, the second year, my wife pulled them out even before, even before semester. And what you had was three teachers trying to control 60 plus kids, and every teacher was doing this for who was supposed to be doing what. And he's in the beanbag downloading apps and playing games and then deleting them before he gets home. Almost no supervision at all. I sat through one parent conference, which I recorded, where we asked the teacher, what should we do? Where should we go? We're not feeling this is working. And he said, well, right now I'd say he's failing. But I think we can work on it. Well, he's now in a Christian school and doing much better. So um, I, I wish you the best of luck. I know your school is somewhere below the middle in School Digger, but you've been up 133 points in the last year, so you're making a lot of progress, and I'm glad for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, you point out no, no school, no classroom, no teacher, no person is perfect. Uh, but it seems to me, in my experience, is that uh, it's a very good feeling when you put your kid on the bus or when you take your son to school and you drop them off and you feel very confidently that they're being educated and they're being safe. And that's, in, in my experience, that's what I feel. So I thank Mr. Griffin for his effort and for speaking. Yeah. Yes, please do. I don't know all of the ins and outs of that program because I'm not there. Right. Uh, I'm quite sure that wasn't the intent and I'm sorry that you had to experience that. 
Uh, but one thing I can tell you that we're very adamant about at Prairie is ensuring that every kid is successful. And we understand that all kids learn differently, so I have two daughters at home. My oldest daughter doesn't use a lot of technology, my younger one does. But I don't force it on even one. But the one thing that we are continuously doing is looking at how can we get better and how can we get the needs of everybody within the building and parents as well, because we want to help assist any way that we can there. And that's why I make it a point to be in classrooms every day and be accessible to any parent in case anything comes up so that I can also intervene. Sounds great.